Hi, my name is Lisa MacArthur Edwards. I am a basket maker and artist on the Central Coast, and today we are going to be making coiled baskets like this. Um, and this is going to be for Sydney Craft Week. So you are going to receive a little box like this, and inside you're going to have pretty much everything you need, the yarn to, to be making, the rope. Um, you're going to be getting different colours of wool, and you'll also be getting instructions, supplier lists, um, really good websites to look up, great books on basket making, um, and you will also be getting a needle. And that's pretty much everything that you'll be needing to make these baskets. So you can make coiled baskets out of many different materials. This one here I've made out of um, fabrics and wools and bits of scrap material. That's one example. You can also make coiled baskets out of um, natural plants and I've got a gyamia lily in here, I've got the palm inflorescence that fall down off the palm trees and I have feathers that I've sewn into the tops. Um, with this cord basket I've made it actually out of plastic bags and sweet wrappers and chip wrappers, all the things that don't biodegrade. But today we are going to be working with sash cord, which you can buy from Bunnings or Spotlight, anywhere like that. And we're going to be making it out of sash cord. So we will start. Okay, so you start off with a piece of wool about an arm's length. Something that you're going to be comfortable with the length, where you're not going to get into a tangle. And I'm sure many of you can do needles, but often with wool, the best way to thread a needle is to put your needle through, pull the wool really hard against the needle, makes it very thin. You put your fingers up and the wool just lifts up into the eye. And that is the best way to get your wool on, because lots of people are used to cotton, but not wool. The hardest part about a basket is always the start. Once you've started and you've got going, you're fine. But the beginning of a basket is always tricky. It's always um, a bit hard on your hands. So after we've done about three coils, we will rest, stretch our fingers a little bit, stretch our arms, and then we can start it again because the first three runs are just a bit hard on your hands. So we start off by just tying the wool in a knot around the sash cord. Just any knot, very simple. And we don't even worry about the ends, they will get wrapped up. And I start off by just wrapping this end. And that just gives you something solid to stitch into. Okay, then you just bring this around so it's almost just folded. And you basically just need to hold it into place. Now with basketry, you always come from the bottom, you come over the top and into the middle. You turn it around a little bit. You come from the bottom, over the top, into the middle. And you do that for a couple of runs. And you basically start to create like a wagon wheel. If, it is, if there's not enough stitches, you get a lot of movement. So you want to try and get a couple of stitches in there. And this first bit is, as I say, it's a bit tricky, but as soon as you get past this, it actually just flows really quickly and really easily. So again, you hold it, you give it a little turn around, bring it over, I tuck the wool under my thumb and I put it I can now put it straight through the, pr the coil in front of it. And you just keep going like this, so over the top and through the coil beneath it. And so we're almost, we're at the second coil here. And at this stage, you can probably let it go. If you found your fingers are hurting a little bit, you can let it go. It's not going to unravel. You give your hands a little stretch, shoulders a little stretch, and then you can keep going. Now, you need to, if I went to stitch, we're going to do a spiral stitch. And what you need to do is you need to be making sure that you're just bringing it 
around and putting it through. You don't want to have the gap too large here because your basket will start to move around. So what you do is after a little while you start to feel a rhythm. You just do a tiny movement and you bring it round. And I will show you the best thing to do at this point again, in order to get this nice line that you get going on the baskets, it's a beautiful spiral. The best way to get that line is to always put your needle in front of the stitch below. So I just push it through, and bring it over, and put it through the one before. Again, I bring it over, put it through the one below. And you just keep going like this. Now when you get a gap, this is starting to be, if I put a stitch here, it will start to be a bit too big a gap. So this is where I add in a stitch. So you see I'm beginning, this is too wide, and this is beginning to get a good spacing. It will give the, the basket strength and integrity. And then the next one, I go back to putting it directly in front of that stitch. Now the reason we put it in front of the stitch below is not so important with this material because once it goes through this material stick. But another time, if you go to do it on a plant material, if you don't put it in front of the stitch before, it actually can tear the plant material and your basket starts to get very uneven and unravel. So that is why you always do the one before. But also it helps you to keep a very strong pattern and you really get that really strong spiral begin to happen. So you'll keep doing this until you've done about eight or nine coils. And then you can start to go up, which we will go through in a minute. So, again, every time the stitch, every time you get a space that's a bit too far apart, you just add in an extra stitch. So here you see the jump is gonna to be too large. We need to add in a new stitch. And it looks really like you've just started a new stitch here. It doesn't look fantastic. But as soon as you've done this, you really, you can tell where I've started a new one here and here. But after a while, you just can't tell. It all merges in. And obviously as the basket's getting wider and wider, your spacing is gonna get wider and wider. So we just go going like this. Now you can stitch with all different kinds of things. On this one we've just gone with yarn, which is just a standard wool. Um, you can stitch with raffia. You can stitch with linen cloth, so uh, linen thread. Most of these baskets here, especially if you're working with a plant material, you want to work with a linen thread. Um, because they just generally don't rot out. Because with the basket, with the plant material, you are always, um, you're always working with the plant material damp and you don't want the cottons that you stitch with to rot. Um, there are other baskets that I've done here where I've, you can stitch with ribbon, so there's all different materials that you can use. Um, you can even stitch with the plant materials as well, like I stitch some baskets, I stitch with the um, guy, Millie, guy Millie leaves. Okay. So we'll do that for a little while until you have eight or nine coils. So we'll move on to this one, which is ready to go up at this point. And we'll put this aside. Okay, so this is now your base. This is uh, about eight or nine coils, and you're at this point. And we have been stitching with it like this, with our tail in this hand and our needle in this hand. If you're left-handed, obviously you've got to 
stitch it in that way, but right-handed we're doing this. So when you go to go up, and this really confused me at the beginning when I very first learned this, although this looks really lovely and normally the back doesn't look so fantastic, you actually just want to flip it up. This, the, what was the bottom, now becomes the base of your basket. This will now be inside your basket. All right, so we've done eight or nine coils at this point, and we've got this lovely spiral going on here. And the back doesn't look as fantastic, but we don't worry about that. What we are going to actually do now is you've been working in this way, bringing it over the top. We are actually gonna flip the basket up. So what was the bottom is now gonna become the inside of your basket. And it's a bit like making a coiled pot. I don't know if you've ever made a coiled pot out of clay, but if you want to go straight up, you would put your, your, your rope directly on top. So if you want to go straight up, like this, is, this one here is going straight up, then you put it directly on the top. If you want to come out a little bit, um, which I've done more on this one, where I've come out at an angle, just here, then you need to put it slightly at an angle, sitting slightly on the angle of above, so you're not sitting it straight on top, you're sitting it slightly in the front. You're still stitching the same way, and we're just gonna put it slightly on top, and we're gonna start to take this up. Still stitching to the one, putting it in the thread beforehand, and bringing it up through. So now you see the direction where this is actually lifted up and is going over the top here. You can actually see that movement to show you that you're now going from the base, going up to start making the sides. Okay. And we continue on. So we're still coming over the top and going into the stitch in front. So the movement hasn't really changed. And occasionally, if your stitches go a bit wonky like that, you can just pull them over. I just flip them over with my nail. Take it to the one in front. Take it over there. The front, take it through. Now at some stage, you are going to have to add in, your thread is going to end. So you need to know how to add in. So I will show you how to do that. So we're just gonna cut this one and pretend that we're at the end. You don't want to leave it so that this is so short. You actually want to leave a little bit of length. You just wanna have a nice bit of length on there. So you've got something to work with. If you've made it too short, then you can't, it's really hard to tuck in. And at this point, we can actually change to a different color. Okay. So we thread our needle, pushing it through again. Although this now doesn't want to do it. Okay, so you now have your new thread. We'll just bend that up a bit. You have your new thread and you have your old thread. You're gonna hold them together. You're just gonna give them a little twist. And you're gonna lay them between the coils because as you are stitching, they will get absorbed by the coils. And later on, I would say you can give it a little bit of a haircut. You'll see them a little bit sticking out and we can give that a little haircut and cut that off later. So we're just tucking them between the coils where they will get hidden. And we continue stitching exactly like normal to the one in front. So 
So you can see it is still there, but a bit later on we can give it a little push and a pull, we can thread it in between and we can cut it off. So I don't worry about any ends that are sticking out because you can always sort those ends out later. So I know that it's actually caught in here now, so I can actually cut these bits off. So I would cut those bits off because I know that they're going to be held in place. So you know that it's caught under there and you can cut the ends off at that point. You know they're not going to unravel. They're caught behind the things. But I don't worry about any little bits of thread left over. I can always cut those off at the end. So again, we can start to think about shapes as we're going up. Again, like I said, you can either do the, the straight up. Um, this one is going, um, I've gone in a bit and out a bit. These ones here, I just sort of make them go quite thin. So you're thinking how, where are you gonna place these as you're going up? So if you wanna come out, you're placing these further out. And if you want to go in, you're placing them further on top. So you can pretty much make any shape that you want. I mean, this can continue and come straight up and go very thin. Um, the other reason why we do that flipping the bottom over, which will help you when you're going to do that flip your bottom over to go up, is if you were to work with it where we just kept going, you would be trying to stitch from inside here and there would be no room, especially if you were going to come in, there'd be no room for stitching. So by flipping it over, when you're flipping it over to go up, you are always working on the outside so you can shape your basket to do anything that it wants. The other thing to be aware of all the time when you're working is the tension. If you are pulling the yarns too, too tight, you're gonna land up with your, um, the base of your basket bowing like this because you're pulling everything really close together so you just have to it's it's just one of those things where it's just trial and error you just you just get used to working with the tension so don't be hard on yourself if you get a bit of bowing it's just learning the materials learning the tension because all basketry is literally just tension so you're just working with um, not pulling these around. It's not supposed to be hard work. It's supposed to be relaxing. Um, and it's just finding a rhythm and emotion and just where nothing is tight. Um, it will hold together unless your stitches are incredibly loose. Um, but it's just finding that nice happy medium where you're not pulling at all the materials. You're just letting everything sit and just move around nicely. You don't have to pull this through. You are literally, it's just there almost to like tack everything together. And it, it, I mean, with this material, there's a certain amount of movement. You're going to get a bit of movement because that's the nature of this material. Um, you know, this, a lot of these, it's, it's, a, it's a lot tougher working with the, basque, the plant materials. But with this, it's just, yeah, just getting used to the tension and it's a first basket. So, you know, it's a practice. I would, I always say to people, go home after you've done the first one and do another one because the first one's probably not going to be brilliant, but the second one will be brilliant. So it's just that all that time, you know, remembering the tension and a lot of people get stuck where they suddenly go, hang on, my stitches don't look right. And it's always to remind yourself, am I coming over the top and going through? Because a lot of the time, especially when you first add in a new color, you land up, you find yourself out here and you're going over the top and you're going, it's not working, it's not working. It's because the whole time you've got to be coming from the back over the top and in front of the next stitch. So that's just something to be aware of all the time, like which, am I still coming over the top? And am I holding everything nice and loosely?
and after a while you just find you're in a really nice rhythm as you're moving this around you're literally moving it around you don't even have to think about where the ne next stitch is because it's just a natural movement that your your hand naturally goes that distance and it just becomes this nice rhythm and then you can honestly just sit in front of the TV making these things and the other thing you want to be thinking of as well, which is a, um, a, a creative thing really, is how you want the colours to be as well. So on this one I've done um, where you've got a dark section and a light section. It's just thinking of the patterns that you'd like to create. This one, and I often like these walls. These walls are fabulous because they're, they're dyed in all these different colours. As you are stitching, you're getting random colours. So you're not even having to think about changing your colours. You're just getting all these lovely patterns and you're not even thinking about it because somebody lovely dyed the wool for you. Um, so I actually really like these multicoloured ones and you have actually got a multicoloured one in your box that is really good. Um, the other thing you can do is all different patterns so you can actually move um, these around and you can actually make all these different patterns and you can go back on yourself so here you've gone back on yourself here we've gone over here I've put in rocks and bits of driftwood and here I've gone backwards and forwards and it's still the st same stitching and you are just manipulating this around so I could do a little patch in here that I wanted to um, and then carry it on here. So I've got little gaps in here. So you can do all kinds of really sculptural things. Again, in here with these ones here, I made holes in these. Um, I've made some of them quite sculptural. And this is another one where you can really see where I've really moved the rope around and created little holes, um, little swirls through all these little um, little patterns that you can get through. So this whole section is coming around here and then another section is coming around here. This is actually bent here. So there's a lot you can do um, if you just want to keep going and keep playing. I've got all these lovely swirly eye patterns here. So it's just, you, it's just playing, playing, playing and just seeing what you can do with the material, how you can push it and move it around. If you want gaps, if you want to add in shells and things like that, you can do that. Um, now we'll move to how to finish off your basket. You'll get to a stage um, where you're getting towards the end of the material. And I can actually I'll quickly tell you, if you wanted to continue your basket and, and add in extra material, I'll show you how you can do that. I'll just a bit of this. So if you wanted to add in on this kind of material, you need to cut part of this away. Because if you sewed two of them together, you'd land up with a big thick bulk. You've got the bulk of both sides. And if you cut a section of these away, you can actually land up putting them together one would go there, one would go here. And that's taken some of the bulk out of the material and you can keep stitching. I think I might have one on here. You could, I have actually got a join on this basket which you can't actually even see. Um, because by the time you have stitched around and you've got two sections of the material over the top, they will be held in place. We might get to that in a second, but we'll just keep going with this one. So I'm going to add in material and then show you how to finish off. Now this I have actually used um, some of this kind of wool. It's that fringy kind of wool. And it works really nice if you want to get this nice feathery texture. But we will finish off with just a plain wrap around the top on these ones. So I will change my material go to a different colour, just because I like nice bright red, my favourite colour. And we will add in the new thread and then we will, I'll show you how to just do a very, if whether you're using this fluffy wool or you're using this wool, we'll still do the same motion of how we would finish it off. 
It's just that that wool gives you a really nice texture on the top. So we put the yarns together. We give them a twist. We tuck them under the rope and we keep stitching. So I've done three stitches from when I joined it in. I know that this bit I can just chop off. So I will just chop these. Now I can do two different things at this point. I can continue to stitch it completely until it is all stitched. Or I can actually start wrapping at this point because I'm very used to it. But let me do a few more and then we can start wrapping. Or you can stitch it all and then you can wrap it afterwards. But let's. Again, when you get to finish off, when I cut this, when I thinned this out in order to add in the other section, you still need to do that when you finish off because otherwise you're just gonna land up with the end and you don't want that. You want it to kind of meld around. So, if I was wanted to just go, right, I know I'm on my end at this point, I would start to wrap it. So, I would probably wrap it two or three times. And then I would stitch it in. And I would just take a tiny little section of the bit above, just to hold it into place. So you're starting to get a solid rim and then I would do it again where I'd wrap it around. So I'm literally just wrapping this around and two or three times and then stitch it to the top. Wrap it two or three times. And you would just continue wrapping until you had covered the whole of the top of your basket. Which is exactly what I did with, the, with this. I just wrapped it and then did a small stitch. You can't even, you can tell here, you can see my stitch right here. That's my stitch. The rest is just wrapped and there's the stitch. And this is just great because it's feathery but you get the, you just get a solid top with this one. So three wraps and a stitch. Now you can also add in, if you want to add in feathers at this point, you can actually just put a, you can do a wrap and then when you get a stitch, you just stitch over the feather. You'd put the, tuck the feather into here and you stitch over the feather. And that is how these have been put in. They're just stitched into the rim. You can see them going into the rim with a little stitch over the top of them. And that just holds the feathers in place. You can also put beads on at this point, and you can also put um, shells with holes on. You can just thread them through. And then as you do the little stitch, you would stitch them in. So you can finish off your basket in any way that you want. Um, you can go for, for more than three, but you just want to keep the integrity of the basket so it will add the strength having the, the stitch after three wraps. It's always about the tension and the integrity of the basket. And this is great. This is, the sash cord is really good to work with because you can stitch straight through it and it's it's a nice, got a nice strength to it. Often when you work with the fabric, you'll see this just bends. There's just no integrity to the material. Okay. 
Okay, so we're going to finish off at this point. So we just cut, and I like to cut from the bottom. So I just cut a section off of that, just so I can get rid of some of the, the dense material. I need sharper scissors. And then you'll just start to see how it just sort of melds into the top of the basket. Now at this point I would hold it in place and instead of just openly wrapping I would actually just have to wrap using my needle. So I would just be wrapping by putting it through underneath. I would still do the three wraps and then the stitch. So three wraps and a stitch. might just need to give these a little twist in order to keep them all in place. So you just got to catch all those little cottons, but again, anything that sticks out wouldn't worry too much. You can just give it a little bit of what I call a haircut later. Anything that's sticking out, you can cut off. And I actually find the best thing to cut all these loose threads off with is um, a pair of nail scissors, actually, because they're really fine and small. Okay, so at this point we'd give, we wouldn't worry about these but little bits, we'll cut those off later with some nail scissors. And this would just keep going, we'd just keep going around and around until we'd actually made all of this red. And we'd have a solid red top, which is exactly what we've done at this point here. And that is your first coiled basket. And there we go. Done. So this is the basket that we've just made, which is a coiled basket. And the other kind of baskets you can get is, um, this is random weave. It's also known as like a bird's nest basket. It's very random, it's a bit crazy, um, it's a very fast technique. If you don't enjoy the, the method of, and the precision of making coiled baskets, this is your thing. Um, it's crazy, messy, chaotic, it's, fun and fast. And then this is your, this is a, called a twined basket. This is your standard sort of laundry basket, often made with cane. Um, you can see from the patterning and the shape of the base um, that it's a twined basket. Um, again, this is quite a structured basket. You really have to follow a structure. So I would say these two are very structured baskets and this is very unstructured. Um, this is also a twined basket. It's just using different materials. Again, the different materials just can take you in different places. So they're both twined. They both look very different. Um, that was quite fast. This takes a long time. Um, so that's really the main ones that you've got is the twined, the random weave and the coiled baskets. Those are the main ones that get taught. There are then also sculptural ones. I often do sculptural um, baskets out of these where we make all crazy shapes. There are also methods of twining that are also incredibly sculptural and coiling as well. You can, you've seen some of the sort of sculptural effects that you can get from the coiled baskets. So when you're going to do a class in the future, you just bear in mind there are all these different kinds and some may suit you better than others. Some um, are more structured and some are a bit more crazy and random. So thank you.